Hi, this is a playthrough for the examples that we went through in the Blues and Beyond workshop. So if you've attended that workshop, you should have the sheets, you should have the tablature. Um, if you haven't been to that workshop, you might get something out of this, but really this is aimed at the people that were there and have the worksheets and really just want to reference so that they can make sure that what they're playing from their chord charts and tablature matches up with the, what I intended. So here we go. I'm just going to play through. I have the worksheets here. I'm just going to play through them. Apologies for the headless video, but I really wanted to try and get the uke more in shot for these. So, Blues and Beyond. Um, section 1, the late 19th, early 20th century blues. I've really just got a finger picking pattern here, which you'll have the tablature for, which is a C chord and... That's what it looks like. One bar. It's a outside strings, then the inside strings, and then again, but this time instead of pinching them at the same time, we go thumb, finger, thumb, finger. So if I keep looping it, we get this. Etc. And then a very simple pattern, we're putting a melody over the top of that one single chord. And if you look at the tablature, it's two bars long. And the melody is the 12th fret on the 1st string, the 6th fret on the 1st string, and we did talk about giving that note a little bit of a bend, and then the 3rd fret. So that's right back to where we were with the C chord. The same picking pattern all the way through, so you get this. And again. And faster. Okay, now I'm not going to play through all of the chord charts that you have there because um, until we get to the more complicated ones because most of those are fairly straightforward open chords that you'll already know. I will show you the ambiguous G7 which is this, which is open, fifth, third, fifth. That's a G7, it's also a G minor 7, it's lacking the note that tells us whether it's major or minor. That's one that I use quite a lot in place of in some of my blues playing and that should also be notated on your notes. Then we go for a, a three chord blues and the only thing to add really there is the alternative voicing for the F7 chord. It is in fact an F9 chord and it looks like this. Open, third, fifth, third. And I sometimes use that instead of an F7 down there. If you don't remember, the reasoning behind that was that we can have our C chord with our open G, we can have our F9 chord with that open G, and we can use that alternative G7. I can keep that open G all the way through as a drone. Riffs, runs and turnarounds, I'll just play through those. The first one is this. Everything apart from the first C chord and the G7s at the end happens on the first and fourth strings. So I'll do it slowly for you again. Okay. And here's another one which sounds very similar. This time the first and final chords are full strummed chords. Everything in between happens on the first and third strings. Okay. This one isn't so much of a turnaround as a little run that leads into something. So it's quite nice for us to give clues about when a chord change is coming. A common thing when you're going from a C to an F is to go to a C7 and everybody then is set up for the F chord and a lot of blues players will do this with a, a little run that turns the C into a C7 and then leads us into the F. Here's my little run that does that and you've got this in your tablature. And the tablature stops there but as you can hear that's going leading into an F chord, so I'll play that with an F on the end. It's leading 
to that F chord nicely. Right, there's no more tablature, but there are uh, a couple of chord charts. This time I'm going to play through them for you because, uh, as you'll see from it, I've not just given you chord names, I've given you little diagrams. And that's because these are less familiar voicings, alternative voicings up the neck. Um, I'll play it nice and slowly. The first one is example four, which is the fatter sounding chords. They're a little bit more jazzy, but essentially still a, a fancified 12 bar. A lot of those chords, like the E9 at the end of the first bar, leading to the F9, and the F sharp 9 at the end of the first row, leading to the F9, are really just passing chords, where you find a chord a fret above or a fret below the chord you're actually wanting to go to. So instead of just going C7, F9, we can go C7, E9, F9, or C7, F sharp 9 can go down or up one fret. It's just a little way, again, of setting ourselves up for a chord change, but also adding a little bit more interest. Finally, part 5 is the uh, more European harmony, the sort of leaning towards ragtime rather than, um, even if it's fancy fine, it's still basically a three chord thing in the, in the previous example. This is where we start going around the circle of fifths. Um, this is leading us more towards ragtime and early jazz. So here we go. This uh, chord chart number five goes like this. So hopefully, um, if you went to the workshop and you came away all excited and then you looked at the sheets a week later and went, I can't remember what any of this meant or sounded like, hopefully that's going to be helpful to you. I'm going to do this with more and more of my workshops, especially the ones that have got bits of tablature in them. Um, so if you know anyone that came to the workshop, please share this with them. If you didn't come to the workshop, I'm afraid I can't really supply you with all the tab that goes with this. Uh, what you really need to do is try and get to the workshop. Um, uh, if I just hand out the tab, then you're missing out on 80% of what the workshop was about. Um, so uh, hopefully it might inspire you, if you don't know what's going on here, to come along to one of the workshops at one of the festivals or, or book me to come and do a workshop for your club. Quick advert there. Anyway, for the Blues and Beyond people, hope this helps and I'll see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>